Welcome to the Cannabis 101 podcast, your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond. Here's your host, Dean Millard. Hello there and welcome to episode 68, hour number two of the Cannabis 101 podcast. Uh, We have split things into two hours. Hour number one came out Monday and this is hour number two coming out on Wednesdays. And uh, this is going to be a really, really fun show. But if you are familiar with this show, you know that it's not just about getting high, it's about getting healthy. And you also know There's also one way that we get things going on this program, and that's by finding out what's your groove. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Can you dig it? Can I grab you by the boo boo, don't it? Pipe in a great. This is great. This is the bee's knees. So when I say what's your groove, uh, I mean, if you are grooving with something, what is it? Maybe you've got a joint. Maybe you got a bong. Maybe you got a nice big vaporizer like I do right here. This giant bag. Let me switch cameras here, actually. It might be better. Uh, The old supernova from, I call it the supernova. It's the volcano hybrid uh, from Stores and Bickle. So anyway, I ask what's your groove, meaning if you're uh, going with something cannabis-wise while you're listening to the show, Let me know what it is. Maybe you've just got some nice, relaxing CBD. Maybe you've had an edible or two. I'm not sure, but I'm going to get my groove on uh, because I have uh, melon cookies from Natural History. You will find out in a couple of seconds why I am going with this. I love, 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 love the uh, volcano. It's ridiculous. It is a great investment um, if uh, maybe smoking isn't your thing. Uh, it certainly uh, makes it uh, a lot easier. I, I sir, Since I've been using this volcano, I definitely, my coughing has gone way down when it comes to cannabis. And if you, if you use cannabis a lot, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So here is what's coming down the hash pipe, so to speak, on this episode. Jim Hole of Atlas Growers and Natural History is their rec side. Uh, He is the VP of Cultivation at Atlas. He's going to join us for an excellent conversation. I really enjoyed this one with Jim Hole. And we're also going to have What's That Strain featuring Melon Cookies. That's what I was talking about. Uh, from earlier. So what's that strain, of course, is with uh, Chris Ionson, our educator. Uh, He is, of course, with the Nova Cannabis Jasper Ave. And so Melon Cookies from Natural History is what we're doing. Our cannabis question, we'll throw it to you in just a second. And we'll also have our cannabis character. Uh, Hint, it's played by a Canadian. You should like this. We'll also tell you a little bit about the uh, Weed Weekly as we get going. But Let's get going now with the cannabis question. It's prize time. (laughs) Chime in on the cannabis question. And you could win a Cannabis 101 podcast prize pack. Hit us up on any of our social media feeds or email us at cannabis 101 podcast at gmail.com. Okay, here we go. So 
So for those of you watching, thank you very much. Either on our YouTube channel, the WeTube, or on any of our social media feeds, you can see that the cannabis question is, who are you thankful for in the cannabis industry? If you're listening, thank you very much for doing that. We do now have video, as you've heard me say, so you can check that out on those channels if you'd like to check out the studio and some of the cool things uh, that we'll be showing you over time. So uh, who are you thankful for in the cannabis industry? Of course, just coming out of Thanksgiving. Um, on our number one, I mentioned uh, Grant Sanderson of Nova Cannabis, uh, who was a big help in giving us some information and some good contacts as I was launching this show um, in May of uh, 2019. And so today I'm going to pay tribute to somebody else, and that's Jessica Patrician, who owns Spirit Leaf Argyle. Uh, a, a woman who reached out to me um, and just, you know, started a conversation about my show and about uh, her store. I was able to be on location for their Spirit Leaf bus tour. That was so much fun. And uh, I've been able to build a great relationship with her and her staff. I love going in there and talking with the different bud tenders that are working or Nicole, uh, the manager. And, you know, I, I, I go in there now without any kind of ideas and kind of go based on their recommendation. And, you know, we... Uh, back and forth about you know how I feel about this or that and uh, and I and I certainly do a lot of journaling with cannabis about uh, you know different effects and tastes and and how I just felt with it and stuff so uh, I've really appreciated building relationships in this industry and uh, I love that uh, Jessica was uh, great to reach out and say hey uh, I like the show this is good this is uh, something that's important and you know kind of reaffirms that we are hopefully doing something right and i've been able to learn so much from her and her staff so uh, who are you thankful for in the cannabis industry uh, hit me up on twitter at the cannabis 101 you can also get us on facebook and instagram the cannabis 101 podcast and certainly uh, you can um chime in anonymously at cannabis 101 podcast at gmail.com uh, it's cannabis one oh one podcast at gmail dot com. I actually got this uh cool email uh from uh Monday show about uh one of the guys who's listening, his name's Lloyd. He says, Hey man, what's my groove? I picked up some Delta Nine Super Lemon Haze and holy hell, it tastes like I'm eating lemon heads when I vape it with my packs too. So good. Delta Nine has been running a huge sale on their products for the past couple of weeks. And some uh, had to stock up uh, at some others with some great pricing. As for the question of uh, the cannabis question, uh, I'm thankful for Seth Rogen. His advocacy and public openness on cannabis use has sure helped to move things along in Canada and in the U.S. His movies are great as well. Hope all is well with you. Dig in the new format on splitting the show. Keep it up, man. Uh, thank you very much, Lloyd, uh, for chiming in on the cannabis question. And yeah, definitely Seth Rogen. Uh, you know, I, I look at uh, Tommy Chong as the uh, the godfather of cannabis entertainment, not just in Canada, but everywhere, him and Cheech Marin. And I think Seth Rogen has kind of grabbed that mantle as, uh, you know, Cheech and Chong aren't making movies anymore. Seth Rogen probably grew up on some of those Cheech and Chong movies for sure. So I love hearing from people, love to hear from you. Uh, hit us up on any of our social media feeds, or you can certainly... Uh, email us cannabis 101 podcast at gmail.com and just for chiming in somebody is going to go home with a cannabis 101 podcast prize pack as for what goes well with cannabis uh, that is anything that you pair well with cannabis and i'll say um licking my wounds uh, my emotional wounds as the uh, la dodgers uh, were crushed uh, last night in uh, Major League Baseball in the playoffs and are now down to nothing, and it was uh, not fun. And so uh, needed maybe a little pick-me-up, and cannabis is good for that. Puts you in a different mood, put things in perspective that it is only baseball, and real life and death uh, occurs, on, unfortunately. Uh, lost a really good friend uh, this week to a car accident, a guy that I worked with. So, uh, Rob, 
and his wife, we're thinking about you, uh, certainly in your family. So uh, cannabis also is good to put things into perspective uh, for sure. I also want to tell you about the Weed Weekly. And that is our newsletter that comes out every Friday, keeps you up to date on what you might have missed with the Cannabis Podcast, what's coming up with the Cannabis Podcast, some specials that we have going on. We've got some really cool things in the next little while. And you can win prizes. That's always fun as well. So all you have to do is head to www.cannabis101podcast.ca and sign up for our weekly, the Weed Weekly rather. It's our newsletter that comes out every Friday and you can keep up to date with what's going on with hopefully one of your favorite podcasts. So that's www.cannabis101podcast.ca and if you sign up, you're in the mix for our weekly prize pack all right jim hole on the other side of the weed song uh, from the artist my dead dog Cannabis 101 podcast, your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond. Jim, it is uh, so great to have you in studio. I really enjoyed uh, the time I was able to spend at Atlas recently and seeing exactly what you guys do. It's magnificent. So thank you very much for uh, coming out and uh, joining us here on the Cannabis 101 podcast. Yeah, it's great to be here, Dean. I wanted to uh, kind of get a little bit of a history. I always like to tell people or ask people what they did before <laughs> the cannabis industry. Uh, I think most of us know uh, what you did, but uh, you know, maybe for the people that you know, there's a lot of this audience in the United States and yeah. and and around the world. Can you maybe just give us the the history of the whole family and horticulture, particularly in our area? Yeah. Well, if it really goes back, <clears throat> excuse me, it really goes back a, a quite a few years. When my dad, he went to University of Alberta, no real experience in uh, agriculture, got an ag degree. He Family, nine kids in the family, a bunch of them were engineers. He decided, forget it. I want to <laughs> grow. I want to grow stuff. I want to raise a family on a farm. So he came to St. Albert. We started off with hogs, a few cattle. 2,000 chickens. We had 2,000 laying hens. So my brother and I, our job was to go out to the barn in the evening, gather the eggs up, candle them. You wash them, candle them, and then we ship them off to, at that time, it was one of the big chain stores. Mm -hmm. And so we did that for a number of years. Then we transitioned into vegetables. We grew all kinds of corn, cucumbers, cabbage, broccoli, you name it. And then we thought, well, if we're going to do this, we should get some greenhouses to start the transplants off. So that's how we got into the greenhouse business, did that. And then we grew the vegetable business, grew the uh, greenhouse business, combined the two. And then we decided, man, this is a lot. Dropped, sort of put the vegetables off the side. Always had a big home garden. Mm -hmm. Mom always grew all kinds of stuff. And then we really focused on the greenhouse business. And we grew everything in there. We had all kinds of ornamentals, you name it, geraniums, marigolds, et cetera, et cetera. Also grew commercially tomatoes and peppers and greenhouse cucumbers. So we had a lot of experience in that. So basically, grew. I grew up growing a lot of different things. I grew up killing a lot of things, too. <laughs> Let's be honest. I tell people that, and they're horrified. I said, wait a minute, guys. So I shouldn't feel bad for no, the, uh, the herbs absolutely. and the plants that have died this year in this no, place? No, don't feel bad. Because to learn how to grow, you have to kill a few plants. Okay. So that could, for me, it numbered in uh, several thousands. But you say, okay, won't make that mistake again. Right. Okay, won't make that mistake again. So you learn a lot. You learn about how the plants grow, how you can push the limits, um, if you look at, for example, the tomatoes and growing them commercially, there's a high demand by the wholesalers and the, the people that come into the store for that perfect tomato. Mm -hmm. And you got to get the yield if you're going to make any money of the perfect tomato. So there's a lot of things that we did. did that for too many years to mention. Uh, 
and then uh, you know went into the cannabis business. So the the uh, the greenhouse business was basically you know that was your home life too, right? Uh-huh. Like that was that's you. Like, did you ever want to do anything different, or were you hooked right away? With well, it? okay, so I had that one point in my life where I, I played football at the University yeah. of Alberta. I was drafted by the sure. Eskimos. I went to the Eskimo camp. Now, the pull of the family and the greenhouses was too much. I went really? and I said, I had to go to the coach and say, look, and I'm sorry. I, I really am sorry. I was into the playing football, but I said, I got to go back to the farm. And I want to go back to the greenhouses. I want to make sure that my the family is, you know, not, is going to make it. Because I Help felt out. like I was a big part. It's only my brother mm-hmm. and I and my parents. So I felt wow. a real strong pull back to that. Well, well, and obviously, uh, and it had a passion for it too, right? You know, you, yeah. you're, you're, it was something like, like, do you remember at what age were you where you were like, I really love growing this stuff or at least trying to grow this stuff? Uh, I think it was, I was probably, I was still, I was on my, I guess, I guess say 10 or 11 years old. Mm-hmm. And what I found absolutely fascinating was that we could plant these tiny seeds in the field. We had a four row cedar, so we would plant carrots and cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli long long rows as far as the eye could see so one day you go up there and plant you can see where you made the marks where the seed went in and then a few days later you see these seeds popping up right it's one of the most beautiful things to see and we had what we call a precision cedar so it spaced the cabbage out every foot and in a good year good moisture it was gorgeous you just see boom 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 as far as the eye can see that hooked me and I'd be, always be the first one in the family to go to the field, and I'd scratch away the surface mm-hmm. and see if I could find the first germinated seed. Yeah. And that was a big thrill. It's like the first uh, Christmas present or something was, like that, for right? For me, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was like the first the Christmas present. And again, to see that beautiful crop coming up, yeah. it had a promise for the future, right? What What is it that makes the cannabis plant then, as we kind of move into you know, what's going on now, unique from some of the other things that you have worked with? Well, I think with cannabis... It's an interesting world because what we have is we have cannabis that came, let's face it, from the black market. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of people had grown the cannabis in the black market, no choice. So what really was fascinating is that there's all of this knowledge built up by people that for many years had to kind of kind of deal with the illegality of it and grow this this cannabis often hidden away. And they did a great job. And so if you look at that, that was fascinating as to what these people had done. Right. On the other side of the equation is that it's a plant. It is a plant. It does not defy the rules of chemistry and physics. And so if you look at the horticultural side that I grew up with, um, I brought that knowledge to the table. But it's completely disrespectful not to, not to admire the work done by the people that grew it illegally in the black market. Mm-hmm. And I say, if you do it right, which is what Atlas is doing, take the very best of the, what the people have done over the years in the black market and take the very best of commercial horticulture. If the two sides listen, respect one another, you got a winning combination. Yeah. That's what Atlas has. So I hear about, like, for example, you know, I hear about the plant breeders coming into the cannabis market. They want to breed the cannabis. Guess what, guys? Beaten to the punch. Mm. A lot of really smart people, dedicated people, did it behind the closed doors. They developed these spectacular varieties. We're benefiting from that. So to dismiss those guys, those men and women, is a really major mistake. Yeah, there there has to be a place for people that were in the gray market yes now in this market that we're in because the knowledge there is so much knowledge out there like you know show me the guy or girl who yeah. thinks they know everything about cannabis and they'll tell you they're a liar because it's impossible there's you know listen you've been around plants all your life and you're probably still learning yeah, about absolutely. the cannabis plant right yeah you're you're still learning and again it's not ever dismissing anybody i think i think if you do it right Let's call it the two different parties. Sure. Take the ego. Yeah. Check the ego. Sit down at the table. Talk about it. And then go in and see what your efforts have done. And and t- the way I look at it is it's always science. People mm-hmm. have come to me and said, oh, well, we did this. And I said, you know what, guys? Science transcends everything. Science is the black market. Science is commercial, commercial horticulture. Because ultimately, the plants don't care about your politics. They rely on the science. So if you say that you fed your cannabis cow manure and it grew great. Absolutely, but it's still science. Right. It's a nutrient that's right. in there. That's right. If you feed it a commercial what called salts, fertilizer, and the plants grew great, yes, that's science. 
So those are the kinds of things that I really enjoy. And I always like people to challenge, mm -hmm. challenge me. I like to challenge them. And again, if, it, if you're candid, you challenge each other, you've got a great combination there. A hundred percent. We're certainly always learning. So you mentioned that, you know, you grew up uh, growing and killing uh, a lot of <laughs> yeah. things. But what was your first uh, and, and when was your first experience of, of growing a cannabis plant? Like, did you try it a long time ago or was it just like now? Like, what was it like? Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was it was a long time ago. It was uh, growing the cannabis occurred. Well, let's put it this way. Yeah. On people's windowsills, there's the cannabis plants. Yeah. And you know, you'd see it, and it might help. I might help them out with that sure. a little bit, but the real true experience was at the. Atlas so you facility. never tried to grow at home or any no, kind I of that it's thing because I had so much going on at the greenhouse, anyways. Right <laughs> yeah. when I got home, I had okay, I'm done, man. Yeah, that's this true. Right? I got tomatoes. I got to worry about and peppers and the whole bit. So, so that first experience when you first got yeah. into it, uh, you know, you know, what was that like? So it was like, well, here it is. So we go back this Christmas. Will have been two years. Christmas Day when the first seedling popped out wow. of the substrate. Really was a Atlas. Christmas present. It was a Christmas, and I thought, oh, this is this is this is something. Here it is, the twenty fifth of December, and our first seedling pops up. And so from there, it was a matter of taking that right through all the way from seedling to transplant uh, and right through to finish. So you get to see the whole cycle of the crop there. Wow. So that's when I got to see the whole thing unfold. That is awesome. So maybe let's just discuss, you know, when why you th started thinking about getting into the cannabis industry you know what was the mm. kind of the pull well I'd, I'd been approached by so cannabis we as we know it was coming in going to be legalized mm. the uh, anniversary coming up this weekend that's right mm. that's right and i had people come to the greenhouses and say hey you know we'd like you to be part of this team uh part of it was they wanted to actually grow in the greenhouse and i said well mm. that's not going to happen we've got you know i said there's odor issues right yeah. if you're having weddings and at one time and, and the, the regulations wouldn't yeah, have allowed no, it anyway what, no so. there wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna allow it no so i said thank you but but no thank you and then i it, it, a few months went by and then um sheldon and uh and and clint whose property that the cannabis uh facility is on came to me, sat down, had a chat, and they wanted to explore whether or not I'd be interested in, in doing this. And I thought, yeah, I, I love plants. I love challenges. Mm -hmm. This makes perfect sense. And so had you thought about it before? Like, you know, was there, was when legalization is announced and this is all going on, is it, are you thinking this could be a natural for me? Or, you know, what was the, you know, what was the, the process like for you? Well, I think, I think, Way, I mean, we always joked about it on the family. Sure, show. yeah. All we need is one crop That's in the greenhouse. Right. We can all retire. <laughs> We're done. You know, just grow one crop, just one crop. So that was always the joke. Right. But in the back of my mind, again, it being a plant and a very, it has such a unique history. Sure. And, and a lot of a division. Unique, yeah. yeah. And I thought, man, that's the next challenging plant that I'd like to explore and grow. Because I, I just, again, it, to me, it was a challenge on different levels. It was mm -hmm. a challenge to perfect the techniques of growing. It was a challenge to break down the sort of the stereotype of this particular crop. And I thought that I could assist in both arenas there. So it was something that I was wanting to jump into both feet. I think you've been asked this before, but, uh, and, and you mentioned in, in our conversation, you know, your mom was pretty liberal and open about it. That, you know, the whole family carries a lot of weight in horticulture. Right. Where are their concerns? Uh, you know, and, and you know, I, uh, maybe your mom would be like, this is a great thing that you guys are doing is it's, it's just growing right yeah. in, in essence. It's doing what you guys always did. It's just a different plant, which is now legal. It carries yeah. a stigma, but what do you think about that? Well, I think with the family, I know mom and dad were both very liberal and I think mom's attitude was if it's going to help whatever it was that would help people, mm -hmm. um, she was in favor of it and she was not judgmental and she didn't, uh, you know, if you're, do, if you are doing something that's going to benefit you and not hurting other people, she was fine with that. So there, there was that, but I have to say that there was the concern from family members about, wow, Jim Hole, Hole's Greenhouses, family right. reputation, would that create some problems? My brother was kind of, boy, I don't know. My sister-in-law was, oh, I don't know about this. This is going to be, I think we're going to have people upset. Mm -hmm. and, but what convinced my brother and my sister-in-law on that front was when an, an elderly lady came in and said, I know you, you're going into the cannabis business. And there was kind of that pause. What's, What's what going to happen? Say? Yeah. And she said, you know, I don't use cannabis now 
But if I ever need to use cannabis, I want to know that I can get it from reliable people like you that I can trust. Right. And so she was very open to it. And that was the clincher. That was like, okay. There's another side. Yeah. Of and she was not like your, again, an older demographic. Mm -hmm. And so then we, we still waited. Okay. What's, well, okay. What are other people going to say? You could hear the, uh, you could hear the crickets. Yeah. Going, Chirping. Nothing. No, people yeah. where it's going to be legalized, they're fine with it. It doesn't mean that everybody wants to use it or right. everybody thinks it's wonderful, but there wasn't any pushback on yeah. it. Yeah, I, I just think people thought that is just a natural progression for the whole family. I, well, you know, that's what I you heard. Know? It's, you know, Dean, you're right. I mean, that's what I heard. There was kind of like that. Make they thought it made perfect sense. That was the next step. And I think because of the fact that they thought, okay, we got now we have commercial people who are involved in commercial horticulture getting into it, that makes it even that much more legitimate. Mm -hmm. Like if these people are prepared, prepared to do it, yeah. they're bringing their techniques and their knowledge to the table. That's got to help the industry, and I, I believe that is the case. Well, what, what that you know elderly woman was talking about is the essence of legalization, knowing that your cannabis or your product is safe, right? Yeah. And and that is. Um, what that, you know, the, the stamp of approval and, and the reputations that you're trusting as opposed to, you know, let's face it, my, my cannabis was, here's 50 bucks, give me whatever. Yeah. And that's what it before legalization. And I didn't, I, to be honest, I thought like Maui, Wowie and Acapulco gold <laughs> were stuff Cheech and Chong made up in movies. I had no idea there were strange names. So right. there's a lot of information to learn, uh, but people want to learn from credible sources. And that's what legalization has given them, I think. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. They want they want that, and I when I when I hear about people saying too, well, the black market, it's cheaper, and that, and I don't think people realize where things can go sideways with cannabis. Like for example, pesticides. Yes, <laughs> zero tolerance for it in there. You cannot be spraying these different things. Somebody who has a pest problem not in the legal market would spray just to control. And that's right. In some respects, I understand it, but again, you're endangering people. The other thing is the heavy metals. Cannabis is notorious for pulling up heavy metals. In mm -hmm. fact, hemp was used in Chernobyl to pull up the radionucleotides to kind of and take it so that the plant would extract it. Wow. That they could take it out, and now they're cleaning up that soil. So <laughs> cannabis is very adept at pulling up things that aren't yes. that, both good nutrients and heavy metals that aren't good. So you look at selenium, you look at all other kinds of lead, uh, other uh, heavy metals that aren't great for human health. They can So you've got to be aware of that. So it's something that Health Canada... Very strict on that. I appreciate it's it's a pain. Mm -hmm. I won't don't go kid yourself. It's but it a pain, has to be. But it has to be. It just yeah. has to be that way. Yeah, it's it's the same reason. You know, we were seeing uh, a lot of unfortunate things with some of those vape pens that were coming yeah. out because the the, the dealer is cutting corners. Right. Uh, the black market dealer is cutting corners to make more money, yeah. and and that's something that you're not gonna not gonna find. You can't. You can't from an ethical and a regulatory position. You can't. You can't do it. No. Ethically, who, nobody's. I, I wouldn't want to be a part of a company that even tried that. No. And then uh, then then Health Canada is there to enforce the fact that if somebody is that stupid to do yeah. that, they're going to be there to, to check it and they're going to put you out of business. Yeah. So let's chat a little bit about uh, kind of Atlas and, and you know, Atlas is a uh, growers is a medical side. And then you guys have natural cannabis uh, coming out. Uh, yeah. What are some of the things that kind of excites you uh, with what you guys are doing at Atlas? Well, I think right now it is the fact that if you kind of go back, uh, we've got some great people at the facility that have, got a depth of knowledge on the very best genetics mm. and i can't i'm not that guy so we'd probably be growing hemp really nice hemp <laughs> but it'd be hemp so i look at our grow team of you know we got uh reed myers the chief scientist yes. and the master growers you know we have we have uh john and, and chris out there and we're bouncing ideas all the time off one another and we're arguing about stuff and we're making it better so that's the exciting thing about the Atlas company is that it's a young company. It's progressive. We're prepared to rock the boat a bit. We're prepared to uh, just ensure that we're that we're making the very best product that we can. Mm -hmm. And that starts with the genetics. You know, so if you don't have the right genetics, a very fundamental mistake that's happened occurred in the marketplace is there is this gold mine. I'm just I'm going to build. I'm going to build big, and I'm going to put cannabis in there generic term cannabis right not no 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 it doesn't work yeah. that way what are you actually growing yeah what so, cannabis I, I look at tomatoes for example in the greenhouse i had 20 foot tall beefsteak tomatoes okay. great big fruit i had mini motto which is about two feet tall right 
So if you want the beefsteak, I don't care what you do to the mini motto. It's not going to give you a beefsteak tomato. Right, right. So you got to have the good cultivars in there. And that means you search out, you explore, you understand. Again, not my field. These other guys did that fantastic work on that side. And the good news is we're not stopping on that. We're just going to keep going and, cre- and, ha- and putting out the mm-hmm. next great cultivars because we know that's what the marketplace wants. And we can explore. So you look at the cannabinoids. So it's not, we all know THC and CBD, but there's a ton of other ones in there that are purported to, and I can't claim any health sure. benefits. We're going to get there, though. Yeah, it's better sleeping, weight reduction. I know people that do, for example, they give some cannabis to their pets. Mm-hmm. They give some of the CBD. Yes. Not trying to get them high, obviously. No. And again, I'm not endorsing that, but I, I hear anecdotally how much that's helped their pets. The pet market's going to explode here with CBD. I, I think it will. Yeah. So that's kind of where. So again, exciting that we can get the best, have the best genetics and then take it. And then, and then when you have the best, growing it to extract the very best from that particular plant. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. You can have the best growing set up and everything, but if you don't start with, the right product you know it's like if you go buy a bad steak i don't care how good uh, your barbecue is it's still going to be a bad steak you can't pour enough barbecue sauce or salt it's like not the old west way we'll just throw some salt on it right exactly salt pork or whatever (laughs) so do you think there is something that sets your team apart and and i know you okay I, i was gonna say i know you don't haven't been in the space a long time but what is it that sets you guys apart? Well, I think it's a young team. And again, I think what it is, is we don't have these layers in the company. It's a smaller company. Sure. You know, so we've got a, a smaller grow operation. We've aligned ourselves with some others that really are going to be under very close scrutiny by us growing out our genetics. Right. And we can test it. We can test it in-house and see what's happening there. But the, the people at the top, you know, you look at Sheldon, the CEO of the company, and uh, Jeff, What a CEO, brilliant mind. And, yeah, and Clint, who's... It's on his farm, basically. But these guys, it's not these layers. We go and we talk. They're all today. We're joking. We're talking about how to make things better. You know, that didn't go so great. That went great. And then our, our grow team. And uh, you look at on the uh, processing side, we've got some real experts in the lab that mm-hmm. I'm just fascinated by extracting all different cannabinoids and packaging up all this product. So it there's no end to the exciting things that are happening out there yeah i mean we, we were when we were we did uh la kush cake and we were talking about uh, you know sheldon's background of uh, entrepreneurial stuff yeah. like he sounds like he was a, a child prodigy when it came to the to the business side is it one of those uh, places too where you know everybody gets to throw in some some input or is it like these are the experts let them do the work you know because some some places work differently where it's like only this guy who knows this is allowed to talk on this and nobody else is allowed to put any input in. I'm not oh. sure if those are successful. Yeah, no, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer in even this morning, you know, discussing something, arguing about something, and coming up with the best solution. Yeah. That's what happened in my family. My brother and I, we and my parents, we'd be arguing at the lunch table and supper table. When you're all said and done, you come up with the great solutions. Anytime you got to kind of go, I can't say that, I can't say that, I can't say that, you're not making the progress. So everybody, speak your mind, tell us, because that's how you improve. Mm-hmm. And again, the layers aren't there. There's Sheldon and Jeff and Clint and everybody. We're all sitting at the same table talking about this, debating stuff. Having some good laughs too, right, no question. Right. It's not all serious, but then having that goal to be, you know, the world's most trusted cannabis company, yeah. and that's what we, that's what we want to do. And if you look at on the medicinal side and the adult use side, the lines blur a bit too. We sure. all know that. What is yep. a medicine? What is a something that's therapeutic? And what is mm-hmm. something that's more adult use? Yeah, well, they can be both for different people, can right? Be both. We all experience it differently, right? Absolutely, so. I hear that from different people that this is. Their particular cultivar, that's the one they love yeah. because it does this for me. Well, yeah, like Blue Dream is the, the the one for me that, you know, when, well, I, you know, I use cannabis for my mental health and I know Blue Dream is going to help me immensely with my with my mental health. So, you know, it's you get comfortable and and that's why, you know, it's you can you can experiment safely. You can go slow, you can you can have a little bit, find out what is it, journal about it. There's so many things that cannabis certainly can help you and I also love it recreational too. Yeah, exactly. And one thing I want to add, too, is we have hired a medical doctor onto the uh, staff mm. who is going to assist us. Because I think you, you hit the nail on the head. So you, there's something that you like. How do we take that particular cannabis cultivar right. and fine-tune it and align it with your particular needs or your 
friends, particular needs, that is the next phase mm -hmm. of really doing it right. Because let's face it, something that's maybe got a 30% THC in there, it's not going to be right for some people. I don't no. care. Yeah. That is not a good way to go. No. Maybe it's a, maybe it is a 10%. Maybe it's 5% THC. Yeah. Maybe it's no THC. Maybe it's CBD. Yeah. Maybe it's pure CBD. Yeah. And, and at some point, uh, the cannabis world is going to realize that not everything is about THC. And, you know, we're, we're so new in it and that, that the people have to let, uh, to educate. We're going to get there. I can't wait for the time where people are not coming in saying, give me your high THC. They well, they want the entourage effect and, and everything else, right? Well, a, a tip of the hat to you and the guys that came out there a couple of weeks ago because you went back and saw that. And you appreciated that. Yeah. Like you're going, all oh, those terpenes. That's Man, right. That's wow. right. Yeah. You guys weren't talking THC. You did talk no. later about THC, sure. but it was about that experience. It's like it's like the glass of wine. Okay, can you get ethanol and knock that back? But what about that 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 drink experience mm -hmm. with wine or whiskey, whatever your thing is? And you guys really, I appreciate that you guys appreciated that. Well, yeah. And the thing I always say is, how many times have you gone into a wine store and said, "Give me the bottle with the highest alcohol percentage"? Yeah, right. right? Yeah. Like that just rarely happens, yeah, right? I, like, I don't go and buy my wine and go, "Yeah, crank that baby up." Where's yeah. the Where's the ethanol, man? That's right. You oh, don't. I'm going. Oh, that's flavor. Beautiful. Yeah, you love don't that. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. And then that's what I loved about um, you know coming out and seeing the process and. You know, can you um, can you give us, uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, the the growing setup that you guys have, and and kind of you know how, the yeah. process, what that's like, and you know, and obviously not everything, but just give us a yeah. kind of a peek at what you guys. I really was impressed with, you know, that giant room. I don't know if there's the the main grow room or what, but can you give yeah. us a, a just a peek about what's going on out there? Well, our, so the strategy we've taken uh, is uh, we call it precision agriculture mm -hmm. and so what we mean by that is that we're dialing in everything into the crop so that we know exactly how much light it gets so we're not growing in greenhouse we're growing all the indoor cultivation under grow lights right so we can set our light levels we know exactly what light levels were we set our co2 so the plants take the co2 as you know and they make sugars out of it right so you got to crank up your CO2. so we dial that in we dial in our fertilizer program Okay, exactly what fertilizer goes in at what time. We know exactly what's in that fertilizer. We can check to know that it's not contaminated with anything. We have all the, the IDs on that. We can go in there. We do, we grow in the rock wool substrate, mm. we call it. And it's if you think of rock wool, people say, what the heck is rock wool? It kind of looks like insulation. That's right? what I thought yeah. it was, yeah. So in a way, it, it, it's sort of along that line. But they, they take basalt rock and they superheat it till it melts. And then it's spun like cotton candy. So what that does is a couple of things. One side benefit, sterile. No disease issues, nothing. Clean, clean, clean. 100% clean. And then it sets up the right sort of configuration with the fibers to give you lots of air and good moisture retention capacity. Right. And then, But it has no nutrients in there. So they're all hydroponically fed. And so we had dialed that in, and we know exactly what's going in. And then we can... To ensure that we're on the right track, we can test out the buds and we know exactly what's in that crop. We know the cannabinoids, the different types of cannabinoids, the different types of uh, flavonoids that are another one there, mm -hmm. uh, terpenes, it's all there. We've got a report so we know we're on the right track. And then again, the, the thing is with indoor cultivation is it's not just, compared to greenhouse, people say, why do I grow in the greenhouses? Well, yeah, you can grow in greenhouses. But in the winter time, yeah. you get less light. Summertime, excessive, well, lots of light and maybe too much heat. So how do you get the consistent crop? So what you grew in January isn't the same as what you have in October. Right. So that's not a good thing. People want consistency. If you're going to be buying something like fruitcake, you want to know that it's the same January, same October, and you're happy. Mm -hmm. You don't want your wine to change. You don't want your cannabis to change. You don't want your podcast to change. Everything oh, in life is about consistency, <laughs> and is. cannabis is. You you want you want me to pick up uh, you know melon cookies today and be just as happy as the melon cookies I had three months ago Absolutely. or whatever it is, yeah. right? Like yeah. that's what it is. It should be within that very narrow band. You're not going to want to see this huge huge fluctuation in that in that quality or that the uh, sort of the parameters mm -hmm. of the terpenes and the THC and CBD. What is your favorite? part of the growing process you know at atlas that you guys are doing right now like it sounds it's it's a little different than when you would go out and find that first sprout right yeah. uh, but, but what what is the your favorite part about uh the product maybe it's finishing i'm not sure but. well i think yeah i think if you look at it i would say there's a couple things that i really like i like to walk into a grow room and see that uniformity 
and knowing that if you put in a thousand plants, a thousand plants of equal quality come out. Right. That reaffirms that you made the right choice on your growing parameters and your substrate, you know, the Brock wool mm -hmm. and all that, your fertilizer program. And then finally getting to the end of the production and seeing all the big fat buds on there. Yeah. Now I'll tell you, do you, to be honest, I had to get an education on the buds. Sure. I could tell you all about tomatoes and cucumbers, what the fruit quality should look like, blah, blah, blah. I had to get schooled on it. They said, wait, well, no, those buds are kind of skinny. Oh, that's, mm, yeah, no, they're, those are kind okay. of larfy. Mm, yeah. You know, and so I'm going, okay, hey, guys, inform me what's going on here. And they would say, okay, well, that's a little bit stretched out. We want to have these nice dense buds. Mm -hmm. So I finally graduated from bud school now. <laughs> so now I know what looks good, but I wouldn't, again, let yeah. your guard down. Take that and get these guys who, who know their product from homegrown or whatever. Listen to them. They'll tell you what the good-looking buds yeah. are. And I can say, okay, I can tweak this temperature. Do I think we can get there, you know? And get it to that point where we got just what we want. Yeah, it's awesome. Th those rooms are great, and you can uh, push the the plants aside um, to to be able to walk through. It's just such a great room. It, do you know how many plants would be in a room like that? Yeah, I've got a, you got over a thousand. Wow, just over a thousand plants in a room. Interesting thing is, we got a thousand, and believe it or not, we may be reducing the density a bit because the cannabis plant is so aggressive. Right. That you can. You've got a lot of bud sites on there. So do you need that density? We're doing some experimentation, and we figure we can maybe reduce the number of plants that still mm -hmm. have the same yield and the same quality from uh, the cannabis plants. Always trying to improving. That's that's another thing. Consistency and always trying to be better. Never resting, right? Never never sit back. No, absolutely. You got to keep pushing and you got to keep trying to improve. All right. So let's maybe chat about you know what are some of the things that we could see from you guys down the road. Uh, sneak peek. Uh, what do you got coming? Maybe some uh, concentrates, extracts, strains. I'm not sure. What do, yeah, you, what do you guys got? Well, we got a lot of a lot of the con so we're really again. There's all the value added products, right? Like yes. the pre rolls. So this is a whole new game. At first, you're thinking, yeah, we're going to grow flower buds, we're yep. going to do maybe some extraction. So we've got all these different products coming out. One th one that I'm excited about, and it's kind of a, it's not on the market yet, not there yet, but I'm really excited about is some technology on patches. Oh, yeah. So patches, there's a company out of the United States. Like the transdermal uh, patches? Transdermal. Yeah. The trick with transdermal is that having the right formulation so it actually goes across and through the skin. Mm -hmm. And to date, a lot of these patches have been mediocre. So apparently, this particular one has got, well, I know it does from the research. It has, the, it's, it's very effective at letting those products from the cannabis plant go through the skin. Good. Now, it's interesting because we had the patch. We're talking about this, right? So here, here's the, maybe it's, uh, I shouldn't say age, but our, one of the, the purists in the room said, no bloody way I'd ever put a patch on me, to, you know, because I said, okay, guys, yeah. I would. Yeah. And I'll tell you, a bunch of my friends would. Yes. And it's like, maybe it's an age thing, but transdermal patch for people with pain, that's perfect product. Mm. They had to reluctantly admit, yeah, you're right. We're looking at my own demographic, younger guys yeah. going, no. I'm, I'm, I'm having that experience of, uh, the, you know, the, the product itself. I'm not thinking about pain. Well, you maybe in the future you will. Sure. So the transdermal, I think that's going to be something that will be the product of the future. Again, we don't have it to market right now, yeah. but it's coming. I used the uh, the Nicoderm patch or whatever yeah. when I was quitting smoking. Sure. Uh, it's a sort of go. the same concept. And, you know, like uh, if, if you're going to, listen, there's a lot of places where you go that you cannot smoke or vape or whatever. You're going on a hike with a family or something. You want to throw one of those patches on? Nobody's going to know. Like, I, I think more people are going to come around to those patches well, than they, they maybe first thought. Yeah, and, and again, I guess that's that's correct. It's simple to do, yeah. and then also there's still that perception by people that oh yeah, they're out vaping or smoking. And yeah, yeah. a lot of people okay, whatever, don't yeah. care. But there's, but there's some, some people pe that do. There's some yeah. people that may have a family member that's right that doesn't like that, and yeah. so you got to okay, fine. Maybe there's a certain vintage we'll call it where yeah. they they don't think it's appropriate so you have to kind of work around that and so but maybe for that's pain relief you know for for pain relief for somebody who doesn't smoke or because listen the idea of smoking a joint if you've never smoked cigarettes could be disgusting for yeah. people right so yeah. i think i think those the topicals those sort of things are really going to take the market uh uh in 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 a really big way yeah like you said the cbd i mean it could be simply no tc yeah, they're just that's right. cbd 
for pain yeah. control. Uh, there's a lot of uh, new consumers. We kind of touched on this uh, a little bit, but there's not a lot of new consumers to cannabis that only know and care about THC. And I fully admit I was sure. one of them uh, before I started learning about this. But what else, in your view, is there to be excited about with, uh, you know, there's there's more than THC in a yeah. plant. Like, what else excites about you about the plant? Yeah, so I think I think we, we, we've, we've alluded to terpenes quite mm. often. I don't think maybe, maybe we should take a step back on that, too, because on the terpenes, I think a lot of people, they hear the term terpenes, and really that, that term terpene came from, from the pine tree, the turpentine, okay. that's where terpene came from. But these fragrances are something that are really rising up. And I don't think a lot of people realize how many are in there. Yeah. And there is a lot. So when we test them, we've got a string of about, oh, I get... Yeah, about, small percentages of each, right? Oh, yeah, small percentage. So we can see, okay, that one, that's why that smells like that. That's why, like you said about the carrier, finally yeah. with the pepper. There's the, there's the humulene that comes from, it's common to the hops plant. It's that's only right. cannabis' closest relative. So we got that in there. And we got all those, the, the combination. So again, you've got all the different terpenes. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the amounts of each individual terpene that kind of combine to give you that fragrance and flavor. Right. So it's having them there and it's having the different levels of them in there. That's the exciting part of it. I think also too, like what, you know, from again, I have to have to learn about that, the actual bud structure, the fat buds, the tight buds. Mm -hmm. People love that. They want to see that they've been exposed to, I guess, smaller buds and substandard quality. One other thing that is absolutely critical. We haven't talked about yet. Curing of the oh, cannabis. Oh, yes, yes. Curing of the cannabis. So, yeah, half, it, it, crucial, right? Crucial. Absolutely. And so you get you get to the halfway mark once you harvest. So our technique is we go in the grow rooms, cut at base level, hang it up, take the carts out to Which the dryer. Which we saw, yeah. So now if you don't deal with the proper curing, like tobacco, you end up with absolute gar Two things can happen. Too wet and warm, mm -hmm. mold fails, can't sell it too dry it all falls apart so nobody's going to take tobacco and have a crumble in their hands nobody if, if the people had uh, pipes and uh, and cigars what do you have you have a humidor right. right so in that room we are constantly checking temperature and humidity and we also check what we call water act water activity it's kind of a technical term but what it really means is inside the tissue of the plant there's moisture but that the different diseases can't get at it because mm -hmm. it's kind of contained in the tissue. But on the surface, between the buds, if the water activity is high, that means, guess what? Boom, it's going to rot. You're going to have mold growing out of it. Yeah. So we monitor water activity, temperature, humidity in the room, in and out, so that when that bud goes in, it is nice and flexible. Then we have these packs we put in our, our plastic bags called Integra packs. Right. And they just keep it at the correct humidity. Everybody needs to have something You've got like to that. have that. If you don't, you've got just dried out lawn grass. Yeah. Exactly. Trust me, when I get my bud back and I don't need a grinder because it's so dry, I'm not very happy. You no. need those those packs in there. And and you're right, we growing is just like half the half the, the half you know, the you can grow the greatest plant if you don't cure it or dry it or yeah. or the the final process. It's going to be worthless. Yeah, it's like growing a tomato and then you put the leave the tomato out in the back deck for a week in the sun. Right. Not going to taste so good. Yeah. And so that that half of the equation, again, I call it the other half of the equation. I think probably a lot of people get so excited by that process and maybe rush it too much, especially maybe home growers, especially, right? They're they're so excited that they, they're almost there and they don't give it enough time. Yeah. And I think what's happened in the, in the marketplace, and I guess... You know, no fault of uh, of uh, some of the LPs, but they've licensed producers, but they got, you know, in their facility, they had something installed that was just drying things down too mm. quickly. Yeah. And they could see, man, we're stuck, man. We got to make some changes now because, great, the guys told us they could take humidity out. We forgot that it's regulating the humidity that goes out. Right. The plant's giving it off. We can't we can't drop it because they're going to get this dry, awful stuff. That's right. Yeah. So it, it's, it's you know. It's very technical and very, yeah. um, it's timely, right? Like you got, okay, this, we have to do this now. We have to do this now. Uh, we, we talked about uh, terpenes a little bit. We talked about research um, and, and all the cannabinoids. I just, I, I'm so excited about, you know, I love that I can go buy a joint and smoke it and nobody's going to call the cops on me, right? right? That's great. But I also love all the cannabinoids we're going to learn about and, and the different benefits from this plant from scientific research. That, that's what really excites me because we're going to learn so much about the plant. And I think this is what's going to maybe 
opened some eyes to people who were close-minded to cannabis in the past. Well, and that's why Alice has done a smart thing in aligning themselves with two big institutions, Harvard yes. and University of Alberta. And so we went into U of A, and I know that uh, I think Sheldon and Jeff both went down to Harvard, and they met with the, the, the uh, researchers down there. And again, we're a medicinal cannabis company. Yes, of course, we do have the adult use product as well. But we're looking at how do we actually benefit society? Because that's why Sheldon got in the game, too. You know, he had people, and a lot of people in their families have sure. different ailments, cancers, and things like that. You're looking, how can I, what can I do to either reduce pain or use it as a medication? So the U of A is going to be conducting, in the not-too-distant future, research on different things uh, where cannabis could be beneficial. So top-notch researchers. Same at Harvard. So aligning with those institutions is a really important thing. And again, we can, after that, say, this is what it does. This is not us saying or making mm -hmm. any claims. This is what research has shown can uh, be some of the benefits of the cannabis. And again, for us to say it is disingenuous. That's right. Anecdotally, I can tell you what people tell me. Of course. But yeah. we need to have those reputable researchers who can say, look at this does this and this does this. This doesn't do this. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's yeah, as, right. just as important. Exactly. You know, yeah. so... But I think we're going to see a lot of things spinning off from that, whether it be like uh, particular diseases that, we, yeah. that, are, that afflict the human population. And maybe let's call it minor things like sleep. How do I have a better sleep? You think, well, that's not a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. You can't sleep. Get a good sleep. You don't, you're not productive. Yeah, sleep is the foundation of my mental health. If, if I have a bad sleep, I wake up. I'm not doing that exactly. well. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, we're all in the same boat yeah, that it's, way. It's, yeah. Yeah, and everybody to different degrees. And you're, you're right. Uh, I, I love the affiliation. I remember when that story first came out, and I said on this show, I said, this is an argument against all the people that say pot is for dummies. Right. Harvard is not studying uh, a plant that makes you dumb. Right. They're, they're just not going near that. So that whole argument gets thrown out the window when credited institutions yeah. like Harvard and the University of Alberta and many more are taking interest. Yeah, and I think... But I, I think you, you, you talk about the, the stereotypes, yeah. right? So when I walk into the Atlas building, I will challenge people who are anti-cannabis to go in there and pick out the users That's and the right. non-users. Knock yourself out. Try to find them. You think they're all stoners. Like anybody's used it knows that's not the case. Yes. But these stereotypes persist. Uh, the people are coming to the door who are users are sharp. They're sharp people. Got their act together. Show up on time. They're not high twenty four hours no, a day. Not, no, they're not high twenty four hours a day. Yeah. And uh, it's it's it, that that stigma is is the 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 kind of the worst part about yeah uh, th this can well it's it's the worst part about trying to convince people is they're they're closed minded. Dean, how about you and I kill it today? Yeah, let's, let's get rid of it. Kill it, it right yeah. now. We're getting rid of the take, stigma. Take that thing, that preconception of. Cannabis user, throw it out the door. Yes. It's done. It's it over. It is out. It is out. <laughs> All right, let's wrap up with this. Uh, we're, we're coming up this weekend to the anniversary of legalization, so another uh, opportunity to celebrate. What do you think is the next big thing in, in the kind of the cannabis industry? Uh, I'm, I'm always interested to find out what people think. Well, I think the next the next big thing is going to be, um, I think edibles have kind of, they've been out there. And I think there's still some issues with how do you kind of regulate dosages and things like that. I think the next big thing will be to, again, we talked about it a bit before, look at the individual. How do we, for some people, no, it doesn't, they don't want it, they don't need sure. it, whatever, that's done. How about for the people that want to use it, both as adult use or, medic or adult use medicinally or both? Mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we take it to the next level and take care of that person's needs? That requires really to sit down and do some investigation on what the needs are and actually a little bit of trial and error, maybe, so to speak, without going too far to see where does a 10% THC, is that right for you? Or is it right. 12, whatever it is. That's that's kind of the next thing there. I think, again, the various delivery systems will be the next thing. I talked about the patches and I think we're, we're headed down that road of how do we now not just get the right product for the right person. What about the delivery system? Right. People, some people don't want to smoke. They don't yeah. want to vape. They don't want to do that. Yeah. Not going to do it. Yeah. They prefer an edible. How do you kind of really fine tune edibles? How do you make it so it's good for a wide number uh, of the population, a great percentage of the population that just simply do not want to do with the conventional yeah. usage I, of the product? I feel sorry for the person that thinks you can only smoke pot. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> you know, because there, as you mentioned, there's so many things. Uh, I, like I said, I think topicals are going to be big. Those patches, uh, just drinks, edibles. Um, you know, I, so, so I think there's going to be just more variety. Yeah, and I, th- I think we're on the cusp of having some uh, breakthrough on the research about some of the really solid benefits that, uh, you know, it could be on the Alzheimer's side, mm-hmm. perhaps it could be on the muscular dystrophy side, or, yeah. you know, if that's the, who knows? I, you know, I don't even want to speculate on different diseases that people have, but yeah, there could so be much. something there. And at the very least, I'm not saying cure, but at the very least making their life much better mm-hmm. because of these different cannabis products. Yeah. Quality of life is, is so important, um, you know, especially um, if that, time of life is near the end you want to be able to give that person as much quality as possible and 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 i don't think anybody i've never heard anybody say cannabis is a cure-all but cannabis like cbd for example i'm not sure if it's going to uh, help uh, people with their alzheimer's effects but it might reduce the agitation that they feel and it might be better for the caregiver as well so there's a lot of benefits to 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 things like that to look into for people yeah dean i think i think you hit the nail on the head there it's not about yeah it's about how do you make how do you make our journey in life better? Right. And cure, great. If you could cure something, yeah. great. But it's the journey. Yeah. And you don't have to get high. Like our our tagline on this show is it's not just about getting no. high. It's about getting healthy. THC might not be for everybody. No. And it's not. THC is not for everybody. But but cannabis can be in, in the different forms that it comes well, in. I, I know at work, the guy said to me, Jim, if you're going to go some, don't do not do this one. You don't have enough experience with That's it. That's right. You're not this THC. No, no, don't do that. I can tell you, you'll be on, like, couch lock. You'll yeah. be on that couch. That's right. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. couch lock again, or you're out of it, man. So, no, don't. <laughs> so, we're not going to ever suggest you even use that yeah, stuff. You're yeah. kind of the, you're the, you're the novice at this, man. That's Just right. Try yeah. this one. Start maybe. with the CVD yeah. or something. Uh, Jim, this has been so fun, fascinating, and I learned so much. Thank you so much. Uh, for first of all, inviting us to to Alice yeah. when you did, and for uh, spending some time, uh, I hope to uh, see what else you guys have coming down the pipe in the in the next little while. Stay tuned; going to be exciting. Thanks, Dean. This is the Cannabis One Hundred and One Podcast, your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond. That was a heck of a conversation, uh, and I could have picked his brain for so much more uh, time, uh, but thank you so much, Jim Hole uh, from Atlas Growers. And uh, we are going to feature uh, one of their creations on uh, um, What's That Strain? coming up with melon cookies. Uh, so that was certainly a lot of fun, and uh, we also had a lot of fun with One Hitters with Jim Hole from Atlas Growers. You can check that out later on in the week as we get to know his cannabis history. And we kind of took a a growing perspective of that. You can find that and full episodes at www.cannabis101podcast.ca where you can subscribe also to The Weed Weekly and qualify for the Friday giveaway. You got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. <laughs> It'd be a lot cooler if you did. Time now for cannabis characters. Dopest dope I've ever smoked. Celebrating the best from fictional 420 film. Hey, I am your stoner. <laughs> and beyond. Heavy girl with that, man. Uh, is it heavy stuff, man? <laughs> All right, our cannabis character today, uh, we're going, I mentioned him earlier in the show, actually, uh, the godfather of cannabis entertainment. It's Tommy Chong, but it's uh, not just uh, from uh, Up in Smoke or any of those great characters uh, that uh, Tommy Chong had. Uh, We're actually going Tommy Chong Leo from that 70s show. And if you're watching, you can see a picture of him and Hyde right there. He is the godfather of cannabis entertainment, along with uh, uh, Cheech Marin, of course. And it was interesting when they first split up. Uh, Chong kept doing his thing um, with the uh, you know cannabis and kind of the drug humor. Uh, Cheech went away from cannabis, did some hit shows and movies. 
uh, Nash Bridges, and the, obviously he was in Tin Cup as the uh, caddy. That was an awesome movie. Uh, Chong then comes back into things with his uh, character Uncle Leo on That 70s Show. Showed up in season two as the owner of the photo hut, disappears a while for a while as Tommy Chong went to jail in real life for selling bongs. Way to go, John Ashcroft. You really crushed the war on drugs by putting Tommy Chong in jail. Congratulations. Anyway, Leo did come back after Chong was released from prison. And uh, here's a little uh, back and forth uh, with Leo and Hyde about something they now have in common. Hey, man, you missed your shift at the photo hut. You better have a damn good excuse. I got busted. Damn, that's a good excuse. <laughs> so what'd they get you for? For loving me. Because <laughs> she's like 14? <laughs> I got busted for possession. Oh, man, join the club. <laughs> yeah, thanks. No, I mean join the club, man. We meet every Thursday. We're trying to raise money for a field trip to Amsterdam. So there you go, Tommy Chong. Uh, by the way, Leo, the character, would be 100 years old right now. Uh, he appeared in five total seasons on That 70s Show. Leo, played by Tommy Chong from That 70s Show, is our cannabis character this week. What's that strain? Let's find out with Chris Ionson, Nova Cannabis store manager and educator. My good friend and our educator, Chris Ionson of Nova Cannabis, Jasper Av, joining us uh, on our uh, first uh, hour two video format. We tried the video once before, didn't quite work out. I think we have a uh, a much better set up this time around. How do you like it? Uh, it seems neat so far, Dean. I'm pumped to see how it uh, how it turns out, but uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I think it's going to just give us, uh, you know, a, a bit of more of a reach and obviously um, allow people to see the cannabis that we are indeed talking about uh, each and every week. So uh, this week on episode 68, uh, good old Yarmer Yager, uh, we're doing another uh, fantastic strain. Uh, it's Melon Cookies. Uh, and it's an indica dominant hybrid, and and this one I think is cool for us because we actually had a chance to go and visit uh, Atlas Growers. Um, that's who the the big uh, umbrella is, and Natural History is who makes this. So I'm really excited about uh, diving into this because I have had some melon cookies before. So and now that we've kind of seen behind the curtain, uh, I'm pretty excited. What about you? Yeah, yeah, me too, Dean. It's uh, it's a really cool strain I, I was a fan of it before but then actually being able to like see it being grown and yeah. uh you know smell it right off the off the plant there was uh, super cool yeah uh for those uh, that are watching on uh, the youtube channel or the weedtube or our social media feeds you can see a little bit what it looks like right there okay so this is an indica dominant hybrid from natural history as mentioned and they are under the atlas growers umbrella and, and we did talk about them recently but just to give us a bit of a refresher yeah, for sure, Dean. So uh, Atlas Growers, they've been around since uh, 2015. Uh, they've been servicing uh, medical cannabis patients. Uh, but just recently, they've hit the recreational cannabis market here in Canada uh, with a bang. Um, the natural history brand that they've come out with, um, so far we've seen um, just three strains come through so far, LA Kush Cake, uh, the Melon Cookies, and uh, ACDC Cookies as mm -hmm. well. Uh, all have been like they they're performing well. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of hype. A lot of people are coming back to the store to get more of it. So it's uh, it's really nice to see. And uh, another cool thing about Atlas here that's kind of new news uh, with Atlas. It was it was announced that uh, Atlas Growers is they partnered up with. Um, Altmed, and it's uh, an alternative med medical enterprise out of Sarasota, Florida, and they're going to be bringing uh, Atlas Thrive, mm. and it's uh, it's a variety of product formats like transdermal patches, uh, transdermal gels, tinct tinctures, and capsules, and uh, so super exciting news there. So you'll be able to just slap a patch on on the shoulder or the back, or I'm sure there'll be places where you're supposed to put them, uh, but just 
to be able to just kind of throughout your day uh, kind of have a slow time release of, of THC or CBD or, or both? You know, this is, uh, I, I just think that's going to be such a game changer. Listen, you know, I, I unfortunately smoked cigarettes for a long time and I was able to quit, but during some of those times I used that nicoderm, nicoderm patch or whatever it was yeah. and it and it did help. This is going to be so good for medical patients but it's also going to be good for that guy who's going to an event or girl person that's going to an event. That's maybe not cannabis friendly. You can still have cannabis uh, about you and in you and uh, yeah. in your system with this thing. I think like this is just going to be something that is going to be just another vehicle for people to use this cannabis. Yeah, totally. And it's, I, I like too that, you know, they're, they're first to market with this, you know, no one else has, uh, has come through with it. Uh, and it's kind of with the partnership of Altmed, uh, they have this patented end caps technology, which delivers a, a long lasting, fast acting and more effective form factor for patients. Wow. Um, and it's, uh, it, the, the process makes the cannabinoids, uh, water soluble. Um, so for that quick, quick, uh, mm -hmm. onset, uh, and it's, you know, readily ab absorbed within the body, uh, super fast. So, uh, super exciting news. Um, we're going to see the, uh, thrive products. Um, first they're going to be available in the shoppers drug mart, mm -hmm. uh, medical cannabis side. Yep. Um, hopefully we, we do see them come through on the rec side. Uh, but for now it's just going to be through shoppers, but worth, uh, worth looking into. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try them out, uh, mm -hmm. once they, uh, once they do come out for sure. I, I just think it, uh, you know, is, is, uh, going to be a bit of a, a game changer, I think, uh, yeah. for, you know, different people that, uh, you know, maybe don't want to smoke or vape or something like that or drink or eat. Like it, I think it's just, Something yeah. that people are going to really gravitate towards. Now, you and I were lucky enough to be able to visit uh, Atlas Growers. I mean, uh, it was awesome. Oh, wow. And for those watching, you can see uh, the selfies that Chris and I took and some <laughs> of the shots uh, that we have. I mean, for me, this was my first facility to go to. And what a facility to go to. And I don't know, you've maybe been to a few others, but I was just so impressed with just the amount of things, what what were some of the things that caught your eye on our tour? Oh, geez, uh, I just thought it was super cool to see all the, the multiple different growing rooms with kind of different environmental mm -hmm. settings in there. Um, seeing their uh, human powered pa packaging plants, yeah, uh, you know, uh, people there, you know, literally weighing up buds, throwing them into the packages, packages. Uh, yeah, like it, a lot of hands on yeah. human work. Yeah, totally, Dean. Uh, which I think is important. I don't. I don't want that automation. I want mm -hmm. uh, the human touch with my bud. Uh, I also was a big fan of seeing that extractions laboratory there. There was a lot. It was like a chemist lab. Uh, a lot of stuff that was way over my head, uh, but it was super cool to see. And, and plus, you know, it's a testing facility too, so they can, yeah. you know, get, test their products. Um, yeah. I, also, the mother room, uh, which we, we didn't really get to go into. We just kind of just had peeked in. Yep. But it was uh, neat to yeah. know that, right? Yeah, it was neat to see how just how big those those plants were in the in the vegetative state there, and uh, yeah, it was just awesome to see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't I, know. I was a big fan, we, you know, in in those big grow rooms we went into, um, you know, the size and everything was consistent, and you know. I had Jim Hole on, on the show today, uh, so lucky to be able to talk about uh, things with him. And that word consistency came up a lot in the conversation. Oh. Like they want their the, the melon cookies that they grow in November to be the same as the melon cookies they grow in July. And everything in that room was uniform. I loved, uh, and he explained this in the interview, but the rock, mo uh, rock uh, wall uh, that they use for, for their growing, uh, the, the ability to just be able to, move those beds apart if you need to get through like it was just yeah. so almost perfect like i was just everything looked one plant looked the same as the other which yeah you know you've grown and and that can sometimes <laughs> be difficult can't oh, it oh for sure for sure yeah I, it was it was weird sometimes it, it, some of the rooms we were in it felt like you were in like the matrix where it was just like all the plants were all <laughs> yes. at the same height um they were all trimmed up to the same height it, it was you know it's like they were clones of each other yeah perfect yeah, it was really cool to see uh because yeah when I grow, it's that's not the case at all. Yeah. So it's, uh... One of the things that I really liked too, and uh, I'm just going to bring up the picture for those watching. Uh, for those watching, the little corner picture of Chris and I is in the, uh, the, the, the curing room and the drying room. That was a really cool process to, to get through. And, and Jim and I talked about that. You know, you can have the best process you want. If you screw that up, 
it's all for naught, right? Yeah. That that's something that probably home growers rush too much, but that was cool to see how they did it. Yeah, totally. Um, and and cool to see that. Yeah, they they are doing a, a full focus on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I've heard that you know from some of like the the bigger guys, there there's less talk about the curing. They just they they grow it. They drive. it's a rushed process. Yeah, sometimes. it gets rushed, and 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 cure, curing your cannabis, uh, you know, locks in some of the flavors, and um, it's it's definitely worth doing. So it's 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 nice to see that they're they're they are doing that. Mm-hmm. I like some of the concentrate works uh, that work that they're doing as well. Yeah. Um, you know, just just being around that much cannabis for me was crazy. Holding a bag of you know, <laughs> I'm like I've never seen you know to get I've got. The the selfie up on the screen yeah. uh but you know seeing that they're they're working on some of the other stuff in that concentrates room that we kind of got to the the lab or whatever you got yeah, to see it, it was just really neat to see that you know they're they're doing so many different things with their flower you know we talked about the patches coming out but they've got some concentrate work going on too yeah, big time. Uh, I felt like we spent some good, a good amount of time in that lab mm. there, just talking about stuff. And and they have that uh, that isolate machine where they can actually isolate uh, certain can- cannabinoids yes. there, so they can have you know CBN, CBG uh, pulled right out, which uh, is so important because we're going to see so much more about those uh, different cannabinoids in, down the road. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, <laughs> there's you know over over a hundred uh, cannabinoids out there, so that we know of. Yeah, that we know of, right? So. Um, so it'd be cool to see, you know, them, them bringing out, uh, um, you know, more options and, mm. and stuff. Uh, I was also super pumped on the tour, Dean, when we got to see, uh, the jars of the samples yes. of, of some of their new strains that are going to be coming out in like the season two of natural history. Yes. Uh, holy crap. Uh, some of that stuff just looked amazing, yeah. uh, and the smell too. It did, and, and you know, it was part part of the you know seeing everything on the tour was was amazing. You know, being able to see this is how we get from you know seed to store, yeah. whatever it might be. But just the conversations I found that I was able to have as we were going about you know this question or this you know for me I'm very new to grow. I don't know hardly anything about growing, so I was. <laughs> I went in with zero knowledge, basically, and how it was explained to me by by these guys, the different people that we met, I could actually understand it. So I just, I love the conversations that we were able to have with different people about questions and seeing things, and and I love the hands-on. So bravo to Atlas. Was there anything else that that I've missed here? I don't want to miss anything that that we talked about because it just was so fun and so educational. Yeah, I think um, I don't know that we missed anything. I, I want to echo that sentiment too, though, about you know the guys that did tour us around. Um, yeah, it was it was just great. Um, I, yeah, felt like we got all our questions answered, and mm-hmm. and everyone in there too. Uh, you know, there's a passion for for the plant, um, and it, it's cool to see. Yeah, indeed. All right, so let's get to a little bit of the history of uh, melon cookies and uh, for those of you at home watching there's a nice look at what this bunch looks like oh my goodness it's so gorgeous all right so the history is uh watermelon og crossed with forum cut girl scout cookies uh, it sounds like there's some information behind that that you can tell us about <laughs> yeah totally there is dean uh so yeah melon cookies um the genetics that natural history has they were bred by lit farms uh, by a grower by the name of uh, Ray Schiavone. Uh, and his flower brand in the States is Tahoe Hydroponics. Okay. And, um, and a, a big shout-out to Reed uh, from Atlas. I just got to do that right now. Uh, he hooked me up with some really cool and in, in, informative insider info mm-hmm. uh, that we're going to share with you guys here. So uh, with the Forum Cut GSC, uh, this is the original cut of Girl Scout cookies uh, that was passed around uh, the IC Mag Forums. Um, which is the International Canographic Magazine Forum. So we've heard of pre-98 Bubba Kush as being something special. Is this kind of like the special original version yeah. of Girl Scout cookies sort of thing? Yeah, like I, I, I have heard that. I've seen that online. And, and I've also seen, uh, you know, opposites yes. too, just with, uh, the, with, with the cannabis industry. There's... Uh, you yeah. know, hearsay and oh, who did it first and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I definitely found that the Forum Cup was, uh, you know, one of the originals. Uh, and it, like I said, it was passed around the IC Meg forums by Ghost uh, of Always Be Flowering Genetics. Okay. I love that name. Nice. <laughs> and 
Yeah, despite the internet rumors of the GSC lineage, uh, Ghost and the people he got the plant from, uh, they had no real idea uh, of, of the, the full-on genetics, that, and is, it, it is a likely cr- cross of the two popular cultivars growing in the Bay Area of California during 2005 and 2008, and that being OG Kush and Cherry Pie. Mm-hmm. So, a uh, real cool story with the forum cut. Um, and you know it's uh, it is a, a you know kind of a tougher uh, strain to, uh, cultivar to grow. Um, you know you really got to kind of know what you're doing with it. Um, so uh, kudos to the guys for bringing in that forum cut. Uh, and then we got the watermelon OG, uh, and that is uh, a watermelon Skittles crossed with an OG Kush. And um, there's two very good breeders that have this plant by name. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, Dying Breed Seeds and Lit Farms. And uh, no, Dying Breed says that their cross is Watermelon Skittles and OG Eddy. And Lit Farm says theirs is Watermelon Skittles and the Taiho, uh, Tahoe Hydro OG. Uh-oh. Both have claimed that the other has not bred the plant but stole the cut from <laughs> the other guy even for breeding purposes. Uh, there's been some, some harsh words thrown around on Instagram about this. Let's hope these guys don't meet in the parking lot at 3 o'clock after school or something <laughs> yeah. by the bike rack here, eh? <laughs> See you at the monkey bars <laughs> yeah uh but wow. uh, the cut that atlas is using uh for their melon cookies is is the one that ray had from lit farms okay um and uh lit farms has only put out an f1 version of the watermelon og um so um yeah with with that um that's that's what atlas is using they, they've got the f1 right and and listen atlas Loves a challenge. You know, I found that out from my conversation with uh, with Jim and, and for meeting those people. So this would be something that'd be like, yeah, this is a little bit difficult. Let's do it. Yeah, really. Uh, like uh, with, with the, the genetics and that, that forum cut GSC, um, you know, it, it, it comes with uh, distinct desirable bud structures. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's been known to have an intersex issue, so hermaphrodites can can come from it, right? Uh, due to the nature and how the GSC was bred, so um, it's kind of a trickier plant to grow, and you've got to really monitor um, any kind of males mm-hmm. uh, popping up in, in in within your grow room. Uh, but it's 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 the structure of it, and and also the you know how it's a, a tougher strain to to grow. It's not super easy, uh, but it, it's going to give you kind of optimal genetics, sure. and so that's why Atlas is kind of going that route they don't like to take the easy way out um which i, I absolutely respect uh you know if it's easy to grow uh let everybody someone, would do it yeah, yeah let someone else grow it and, mm-hmm. and you know work on something really cool and different okay so uh the website is www.naturalhistory.ca um they're uh, it's kind of still being built uh there's not a lot to it right now there's the just the home page but there's a lot of cool stuff uh, coming on the way with this website yeah, absolutely. I uh, I had a talk with uh, Sheldon recently, and he kind of mentioned that uh, that the website is going to be launching pretty soon here, and it's going to be super nice. So for now, we've just got that that splash page, but uh, you know, stay tuned, keep checking on it. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I, I hope to uh, on that website they're going to show you know the coming soon stuff, sure. too, with, you know the the new stuff that we can kind of like get our mouths watering for yeah. in advance. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so that was Sheldon Kroom, uh, who who we met, who is their CEO, and uh, popped into your store. That must have been pretty cool. Yeah, for sure it was. Uh, yeah, I was actually uh, I was bent down at my deli case, uh, it's like tidying up, and I, I heard one of my staff, you know, ask a customer, "Hey, how can I help you out?" And he said, "You know, is Chris here?" And I popped right up, and we met face to face, mask to mask. There we go, and uh, eye to eye. Yeah, and uh, and had a, a good chat though. Uh, he's uh, he's a great guy. Like I think we talked about him mm-hmm. on the on the last time we we did natural history, but just just a visionary in terms of uh, you know the, the business and all all his ventures that he's done over the years, but. Yep. Now getting into cannabis, though, uh, you, you can tell that it's it, they're going strong here. Brilliant stuff. Uh, so naturalhistory.ca is where you can check that out. Uh, the THC in this, 18.8%. Also, they list the total terpene percentage listed at 1.0624. And they also have uh, terpenes color-coded. Uh, we just need the legend for that at some point, and I'm sure that's coming. Yeah. For sure. I mean, it's it's in their their marketing books, mm-hmm. uh, so hopefully we'll see it on the packet and just so that customers can be aware of it. Yeah, but at the very least, um, you know, you in stores, um, you guys know, as, uh, yeah. and you can point that out to I, to I will nerd out people. in store and, yeah. and, and check on those ticks. Uh, it's, it is interesting to try to guess what color goes with what terpene, <laughs> uh, pro, terpene and things like that. So I love that they do that, um, and uh, I love that they list the uh, terpene uh, percentages yeah, as well. Like, so. For sure, I think that's that's big. I'd, I'd like to see everyone in the industry mm-hmm. start doing that, because um, yeah, it just 
it's important to know those facts. You bet. As for what's in a name, uh, this is pretty basic and pretty easy to find out. Yeah, for sure. It's a genetic name there. We got the watermelon OG, melon. We got the forum Girl Scout cookies. So melon cookies, pretty pretty basic there. Pretty self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, when we take a look at the look, um, uh, for those uh, that are watching, you can see the package is uh, it's pretty great. Uh, we already talked about the, the terpenes listed on it, but... The size, everything about it uh, seems like it's perfect. Yeah, it is. Uh, I also think it's a you know high quality bag too. This mm-hmm. uh, this Dynapack child proof line bag. Um, I think it's a good size for three point five. Doesn't mm-hmm. need to be any bigger. Um, Still holds big buds. Yeah, it does. Uh, and it, you know it's it's a line too. So um, I don't. I feel like this this bag uh, doesn't take you know a lot of the trichomes off. Uh, it's going to keep things pretty in, pretty intact. Mm. So. Um, Big fan of it, yes. All right. As for when you get the cannabis out, and we're looking at it on screen, if you're lucky enough to be watching it, man, that purple stands out so much for me. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. And the trim job on this stuff, too, uh, well done to the, the Atlas team. Um, we've got two tones of green. We've got the kind of the light green, the dark green, mm-hmm. and then we've got purple flecks kind of covering the buds, too. Yep. Um, really dense nugs, too. You know, I've, I've, I've taken just a small little nug, ground it up, and I, I was able to get, you know, a good size joint out of that. So real thick and dense. Um, under the magnifying glass, this stuff looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it just looks without it even. I can't imagine yeah. how good that looks. <laughs> right? It looks good without it. But, yeah, if you get a magnifying glass on it. So important. You know, it's covered in a thick layer of spiny trichomes. It's going to look like they're di- dancing. Yeah, like the trichomes have trichomes, and those trichomes have trichomes. Mike Tyson would say spinal. Yeah, right? <laughs> Totally. Um, Yeah, it's really nice looking stuff uh, for sure. All right. Uh, This has an interesting smell. Um, We kind of gave it the name of Fruity Gas. Yeah, Fruity Gas definitely, especially after the grind. After the grind, the the gas, it becomes a little bit, smells a little bit more diesel-y than before. Yeah, yeah, it's just interesting. I mean, I mean, just smelling the butt on its own, though, uh, I definitely, fruit, fruity and sweetie, mm-hmm. uh, s- sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very similar to like a, like a Jolly Rancher candy is yeah. kind of what it reminded me of, like a watermelon one, uh, or kind of the cantaloupe, that, that melon kind of fruit. Yes. Um, I do think that the, in the smell, there's a, like a subtle, uh, spicy, almost cheesiness to it. Okay. That's just very light. Uh, but I, I did get that, and I asked other people about it, and they seem to get it too. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like to do whenever I'm, I'm smelling stuff, I like to get a couple of different opinions on it. Yeah. So. Well, every once in a while, when we kind of can't get one, we'll get my wife, Trish, Nosy McGee, to uh, slide <laughs> in and uh, take a sniff. And I think that's good, yeah. especially with somebody that has no preconceived notions. If, if I Go tell on. you it smells like berries, you might just be thinking berries. And it's uh, our brain works in mysterious ways right yeah it's I, it's best to go in blind which yeah. that's what we always do with trish it yeah. always seems to work out well yeah uh, let's talk about terpenes with this yeah so the uh, the three dominant terpenes to melon cookies uh, we've got caryophylline is uh, number one there that's uh, black pepper spice uh, that's dean's favorite one you bet. Um, we've got limonene coming up next. That's uh, citrusy kind of fruitiness. And obviously with the melon cookies, that's going to be there. And then uh, myrcene is the third dominant terpene. And that's kind of the earthy kind of uh, uh, like cloves uh, flavor. Okay, I've uh, started to fire up the Supernova. That's the uh, Volcano Hybrid. Uh, using Click and Collect that I was able to grab from your store. Um, seems like a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah. That, I, that I got this, but man, <laughs> this thing is awesome. So I'm warming it up. Tell me about your experience. We want to point out that everybody does react a little bit differently uh, to cannabis because of our own uh, genes and our DNA. Uh, but what, what was your experience with this? Yeah, so my experience being super euphoric high, um, not too heavy. Like it did, I didn't, you know, melt into my couch and not be able to move. So okay. that was nice. I was kind of like an active indica. Uh, very smiley. Uh, so it, I, I, when I smoke it, I just smile a lot. Just feels life just feels good. I couldn't stop smiling when I smoked it. Um, uh, Matilda from Atlas, she actually uh, warned me that I would feel this way. Nice. <laughs> Before uh, I actually tried it, and she was right. She was bang on with that. That's a great warning. Yeah, <laughs> warning. This cannabis is going to make you feel amazing. Yeah. Um, so that that was really nice. Uh, I found also was you know very relaxing effects on, on the body mm-hmm. and a real enjoyable head buzz that just kind of floated me right up to the clouds. Um, highly, highly recommended. Uh, actually, one of my my good friends uh, Bobby he had sent me a text just yesterday. Um, we were we went to BC on a trip recently 
and you know tried out a bunch of cannabis we can't get here in Alberta. And he's kind of one of my, I, I smoke quite a bit with him. And yesterday he texted me, uh, you were absolutely right about natural history. The melon cookies is bonkers. Yeah, so it that is. Was, that was really nice to see. Okay, let's get to the three W's as I uh, fill up the bag. Uh, who, what, and when is melon cookies good for? So who it's good for? Intermediate smokers and up. Uh, anyone who's had a, a long day looking to unwind. Uh, I also think it's really good for someone like me. Mm-hmm. And just, uh, you know, the cannabis enthusiast. If you're Experience, for, yeah. Yeah, you're looking for a nice flavor, good smoke. Uh, what it's good for, Dean, uh, right after dinner. I, I really enjoyed it a few times right after dinner. Like a dessert almost. Yeah, it is quite a dessert cannabis uh, cultivar for me. Um, yeah, just with that sweet flavor and the euphoric effects, it just complements a, a nice dinner. Uh, when it's good for, uh, pretty much any time of the day, uh, which I, I love getting these ones where, you know, I can I can start my day with a wake and bake and feel amazing and, uh, and you know, not not too sedative or chilled out. Uh, Get but, some stuff done. And then even in the evening too is great. So it was for me. It was kind of all day long. It was a, a good smoke for me. All right. So the sweetness continues in the taste, does it not? Like yeah. we, we smelled it and we're tasting it as well. Sweet in the melon fruity taste what else uh, what else am i getting i'm i'm trying to think of it but what so, what do you remember for me it was uh it reminded me of uh like i got i got serious grape kind of the berry fruit uh, on the inhale and then i got kind of a spiciness on the on the exhale a little bit um i also commented here like very smooth smoke uh and super easy on the throat uh, just so it, I don't know if that has to do with the taste, but it's. Uh, I just found that it's it, delightful to, to hit. Is there a little bit of cheese in there, too? I, it, that's that's kind of what I got, yeah. too, yeah. A little it's, bit, yeah. It's super nice. It's really smooth. And I, I right after our tour, I picked this up, and, uh, man, it, it, it's so good. It does not uh, disappoint. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to having some of this a uh, little bit later because I think it's going to make for a good night. Melon Cookies Indica Dominant Hybrid. Um, from Natural History. It's definitely worth picking up using Click and Collect at Nova Cannabis. And hey, we're going to celebrate another anniversary this weekend, Chris. Not you and I personally, but uh, <laughs> Legalization yeah. is celebrating another anniversary. That's right. And, um, you know, there's going to be stuff going on, I think, a lot. Tell us what you guys have going on. Yeah, so for the second year legalization, October 17th, um, yeah, we're going to be having uh, at all of our stores, we're going to have like. Um, uh, a 420 specific sale, uh, which I can't really get into the details, but uh, there will be if you're in a Nova store at at the 420 time. Uh, there's going to be pretty pretty crazy deals. Um, we're not really making a, a big big to do uh, with it this year with uh, what's happening in the world and COVID have and to be social careful. distancing. So we're you know we're not looking to have uh, DJs or you know big no. parking lot party here. Uh, but uh, we're definitely super proud and, and, and happy to be doing this. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, come down and celebrate with us uh, for a quick little stop. Can you believe we're going into year three of legal cannabis? Like, I still sometimes pinch myself when we're doing this show that we're actually allowed to talk about getting high and, and, and getting healthy with cannabis. It is just sometimes I, I, I just think, like, am I dreaming? Like, is this real? Uh, I echo that sentiment, man. This is like the dream career for me. So, uh, yeah, for me to get up every day and, you know, I, I go to work in the cannabis industry. like And educate people. That's, yeah, I love that's it, so man. so great. So this Saturday between 420 and 520? 520, that's right. I'll yeah. see you there. <laughs> Sounds good, Dean. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. Uh, melon cookies uh, from Atlas, uh, from Natural History under Atlas Growers, um, obviously a company you and I both have a high amount of respect for. Very grateful that they were able to uh, give us a quick tour. And for those uh, watching, we'll throw up a couple of more pictures as we uh, say goodbye for this week. Thanks uh, once again, Chris, for joining me. We'll talk next week. Happy anniversary this weekend. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dean. It's, uh, thanks for having me, too. This is the Cannabis 101 Podcast, your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond.
All right, that's going to pretty much wrap things up. want to remind you that if you're listening to this, you can watch us on our YouTube or the WeTube channel or any of our social media feeds. Uh, we'll also be having some product reviews going up on our YouTube and the WeTube channel, so make sure you check that out, and we'll be streaming the show on uh, Twitter and Facebook and uh, whatever else, Twitch, uh, wherever else we can. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if you did, please let us know by uh, subscribing and leaving us a review. It would certainly be huge, and there's a lot of different ways you can get in touch with us, namely if you'd like to be involved in the program as a guest or if you think you'd like to do some advertising. Uh, we're starting to bring on some sponsors on board, and we will certainly get the word out about you and your product you can hit me up on email cannabis 101 podcast at gmail.com if you'd like to get on the show as a guest or an advertiser please let me know by the way hour number one will come out next monday featuring david wiley of the oz and this week in cannabis news as well as malcolm labelle of the green generation co in the business of cannabis uh, we did have our number one this week so you can check that out at the cannabis 101 podcast.ca uh, we will have another cannabis question and teach you some weed words of the day uh, come monday and past episodes can be found at the website you can also find more podcasts and shows of a different variety namely sports, at www.podcastalley.ca. I have sports and more, tracking the draft with Craig Button and Fantasy Fun Time with myself and Jamie Thomas. All right, big thanks to Jim Hole of Atlas Growers for joining me on the program. It was uh, such an honor to have uh, him and uh, have him share some knowledge with us. Uh, always appreciate uh, learning from new people in the cannabis industry. And, of course, Chris Ionson from Nova Cannabis, Jasper Av on What's That Strain. We did melon cookies uh, from Natural History under the Atlas Growers umbrella. So I highly recommend that. Don't forget to chime in on the cannabis question. Who are you thankful for when it comes to the cannabis industry? That's going to wrap things up for me. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you missed anything, check out Cannabis101podcast.ca for past episodes and more. We'll chat again on Monday when we bring you hour number two, or hour number one on Monday. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, we end things with the marijuana song from the artist My Dead Dog. And remember, it's not just about getting high. It's about getting healthy.